the term consciousness has been forged in response to the known fact that, if anything, we are conscious. Can an AI system be intelligent, uh, first and foremost, and then uh, conscious uh, as a consequence somehow of being intelligent? Uh, in order to address that in this first part, let me try to answer the question what intelligence consists in. Intelligence, to the extent to which AI research is capable of modeling it, this is my first hypothesis now, is first and foremost the capacity, paradigmatically, of an animal, and if extendable to non-living systems, then also of some other entities, of solving a given problem in a finite amount of time. Now, that capacity is measurable along the following very simple dimension. A system S is more uh, or less intelligent uh, if a system S prime, if and only if it solves the same uh, given problem faster, respectively slower than the first system. So in that respect, for instance, solving my uh, morning problem of getting caffeine uh, and as much of it as possible, as soon as possible, it is more intelligent to use the Nespresso machine that I use than uh, to boil in a long ceremony some coffee or other, because I get uh, the desired result much faster. So the use of my Nespresso machine in that respect is more intelligent with respect to the problem of maintaining ecological balance on planet Earth, it might be less intelligent than some other way of brewing and producing and consuming coffee. Uh, so along a certain problem-setting dimension, we can measure intelligence in that more or less well-defined conceptual sense, and thereby, therefore, we also celebrate and welcome technological progress generated by AI research because it leads to new AI systems, which can help us to solve our problems faster, such as certain problems in chess, so many problems uh, that arise uh, in science, and other everyday problems such as navigating a, a complicated city, finding the shortest path and the nearest grocery store, and so forth, and also connecting with our friends, uh, or manipulating voters' opinion uh, opinions if this is our interest in using AI systems. So. That is arguably the sense in which AI research is engaged in producing outcomes that at least contribute to our intelligence and which many count as intelligent in themselves. So if you think that uh, AlphaGo is an intelligent chess player or a Go player, then what you think about that system is that the system all by itself is engaged in problem-solving activities and solves the same problems that we pose to ourselves namely, uh, what's the best move in a given chess endgame, say, faster than any known biological intelligence. Uh, so that's the assumption. So that is what AI is. Now I want to argue that AI systems are not actual thinkers, and in that sense they are not intelligent, but thought models. So the nature of an AI system is to be a model of the way in which humans actually think, and thereby also the way in which humans ought to think. So AI systems can surpass us in many activities uh, from more or less elementary pattern uh, recognition uh, in data sets, say, uh, up to uh, skills that uh, uh, we very much cherish, such as chess playing or playing Go and other intellectual activities, uh, certain mathematical proofs, and so forth. So that is something that uh, seems to threaten human intelligence because these systems, to the extent to which they model our intelligence, surpass us. But on closer inspection, a thought model, of course, uh, needn't be intelligent in itself, just like a model of a city needn't be a city. To be sure, many models share the relevant property with the target system that their models off. So if I flood a model of a city in the Netherlands in order to predict certain problematic outcomes of climate warming and uh, and catastrophic, catastrophic human-made uh, uh, climate change. If I do this, then I do actually flood something. But I don't necessarily flood a city because we don't build Dutch cities in order to then flood them. 
So, but that means that some models, of course, share some interesting and relevant property of their target system, whereas other models share less, but or rather more formal properties, such as the model of the Black Forest, which doesn't consist of trees, but of certain representations of trees, whereas the actual Black Forest consists of trees. So a Google map of the Black Forest, which helps me to find a restaurant in the Black Forest, that differs more from the Black Forest in certain respects than uh, a model of a Dutch city differs from a Dutch city with respect to flooding. So there are different types of relationships between models and what their models are, their target systems. Now, in the AI case, I think that AI systems and uh, AI research model human thoughts, but not human thinking. So what their model is the logical structure uh, uh, or some other mathematically uh, accessible structure that characterizes the relationship between our thoughts. But uh, what they don't model are the activities of our thinking, because the activities of our thinking, and that's going to be crucial in a minute in the second part, are, as a matter of fact, in human animals, biologically grounded. So no argument to the effect that there could be, or even is, conscious AI should, of course, assume that we are conscious AIs in a relevant sense. There has to be a distinction between us and the system uh, whose consciousness we want to question. And that difference lies in the other element of the concept of AI, namely in the A, in the A of the AI, the artificiality. So AI systems, other than natural intelligence systems, such as bees and humans, uh, did not evolve in the way in which we evolved. We are cell-based life forms, highly complex and organized life forms, uh, which are not even nearly deciphered by uh, the life and natural sciences, though we have made considerable progress, uh, in particular over the last uh, 100 years, or actually less since the beginning of the discoveries of molecular uh, um, genetics in particular. But those progresses, of course, all tell us that we are essentially biologically grounded or embodied, as the saying goes. But the AI systems whose consciousness is in question in contemporary debates, you know, could a natural language uh, processing system soon become conscious or is one actually already conscious? Those hot debates which arise in manifold ways almost every year in the face of the rapid advances of computer science, those questions do not ask something about given animals, but precisely about artificial systems that did not come into existence through ordinary biological evolution. So we are thinking about, you know, bluntly put, silicon-based uh, structures and chip-based uh, uh, processing rather than biology-based processing uh, uh, that is characteristic of natural intelligence and consciousness as we know it. So the question should be, could something that is the non-biological product of human industry, something that neither comes into existence through ordinary sexual reproduction or cell division, nor through growing something like cerebral organoids, that is artificially designed neural, actually neural systems, uh, could such a thing uh, become or already be conscious is the question. And to the extent to which the kinds of things that we produce are, as I just argued, thought models and not models of thinking, the answer is a clear no. So the question would be more like, could the Google Maps presentation of the Black Forest turn into a bunch of trees? And the answer is, of course not, or it would be very surprising, to say the very least. Yeah? So if you post the question in light of that analogy, it becomes entirely obvious that the answer is a clear no. But this needs more substantiation, which is why I come now to the second, uh, at least equally thorny issue, namely, what do we ask for when we ask for consciousness. So what is the meaning of consciousness rather than what is consciousness? And the reason why I start with the question of the meaning of consciousness rather than straightforwardly with consciousness is that the term consciousness in English and other languages is highly problematic and fraught, in particular with various philosophical histories. So it's not the case that we all know what we mean when we say conscious, 
so that we can then just ask the question what the relationship could be between AI systems, uh, maybe clarified in the way in which I did in part one, if I'm right, and consciousness, which we know what it would be if it existed, right? So assuming that we all think consciousness so much as exists, which I now assume because the question is, could AI be conscious? And that presupposes that there is such a thing as consciousness. So I will take that for granted. But what do we mean by consciousness? And now you get, uh, you know, philosophers answers, such as the famous answer, well, uh, consciousness is, you know, what is it likeness? Consciousness is you know, the feeling of life itself, as neuroscientist and neurophilosopher Christoph Koch has put it with a very nice book title. Uh, so uh, consciousness, according to that construal, uh, would be, you know, as it were, the inner side of being me. Uh, but that's, of course, a very vague answer, because there are too many things that go on in me uh, in that uh, interesting sense, as I now speak. So, uh, you know, which of the many mental states that characterize my overall mental state right now counts as conscious? That's the famous question, not only of the mark of the mental, how do we distinguish between something that's a mind and something that's not a mind, but even more uh, complicated, what's the mark of consciousness? So how do we distinguish between something that's conscious and something that's not conscious? Uh, for instance, what's the relationship between the conscious and the sub or non-conscious parts of our minds? So those questions are not easily answered, and they're certainly not answered by just being a competent user of the English word consciousness. Otherwise put, there are technical, philosophical, and other scientific issues involved in beginning to answer the question uh, concerning the very meaning of consciousness. But one thing is certain, and this is uh, going to be uh, the important part of my argument in the second part of my talk, namely that consciousness, the term consciousness, in all its uh, uses so far, has been forged in response uh, to the known fact that, if anything, we are conscious, which is why the reflexive attitude of the famous cogito, uh, the Cartesian, I think, therefore I am, this reflexive attitude that is consciousness getting a hold of itself is quite constitutive of the very topic of consciousness. Many philosophers over the centuries have therefore believed that there cannot be such a thing as consciousness without self-consciousness. Consciousness seems to be uh, constitutively related to itself in such a way that you cannot have or be it without somehow noticing that you have or are it. You cannot be conscious without noticing that you are, which raises the question of the relationship between first order consciousness, the state uh, uh, or event structure that you're in, and you're getting hold of it on something that seems to be a second mental state, which is why, of course, some theorists of consciousness even argue that consciousness is that difference between a first order and a second order state uh, that would lead into the field of so-called higher order theories of consciousness. I'm only mentioning this not because I want to decide between the available philosophical theories of consciousness on some ground or other, but only because my intention is to point out that consciousness refers, the term consciousness refers to something that's, uh, that I am acquainted uh, with in virtue of having or being it. Now, who is this entity that is acquainted with whatever consciousness is? Well, an animal. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.